Howdy! The following presentation will cover the Joint Library Facility for Texas A&M University and the University of Texas. The firm responsible for the design of the building is Harrison Kornberg, and the general contractor for the project is George General Contractors. The facility will be located on Texas A&M's Riverside Campus at 1568 Warehouse Road in Bryan, Texas. The site will be arranged in the following manner. The red represents the constraints of the site. The blue represents a contractor laydown area. The green represents a construction area. And the red represents a material laydown area for the project. Let's move on to the features of the building. We'll start by taking a look at the library storage building. The warehouse tilt wall panels will be supported by a simple steel truss system. The building will also boast a sufficient electrical system, high-powered mechanical ducts, and storm drain piping feeding to a cistern. The automated library stack system is the core component of the facility. The stacks will be fully automated, allowing the user to choose from a large selection of books at the push of a button. This allows for the optimization of space and will eventually accommodate for over a million pieces of literature and research. Now we'll move on to the sequencing of the foundation. The foundation of both buildings consists of under ream drill piers that will be poured in groups of three. Once the warehouse piers have cured, the gray beam work can begin. The underground utilities will be installed after the office piers have been poured. Following that, the formwork and pouring of the warehouse slab can then begin, and the same will follow for the office slab. Now on to the tilt wall laydown area. Each tilt wall panel will consist of two outer concrete layers and an insulated inner layer. The panels will be poured in a designated area and transported for erection by the project's mobile crane. Now we'll move to tilt wall erection. Once the slab has fully cured, erection of the tilt wall panels will commence. A large mobile crane will be used to erect the tilt wall panels. Erection will begin on the east side of the building and will continue in a counterclockwise fashion until the building's tilt wall panels have been fully erected. The same logic will be used for the office building's smaller tilt wall panels. Let's take a look at the building's structural steel. The structural steel sequencing will begin in the warehouse with the structural steel trusses permanently supporting the tilt wall panels. The structural steel in the office building will be the predominant source of structural integrity given its small amount of tilt wall and will begin after the warehouse structural steel has been complete. Let's move to the skin of the building. Both buildings will be covered by a roof membrane. The office will consist of exterior studs, indicated by the red, sheathing, which is indicated by the purple, and finally, the metal panel and exterior windows will be indicated by the green. Now we'll move on to the various MEP systems. As previously mentioned, the warehouse will be supported by storm drains that service the cistern, an array of electrical fixtures, and a large duct system. A large mechanical room consists of additional storm drain piping and HVAC equipment and hydronic piping. The office building will consist of overhead plumbing, vertical and in-wall plumbing, various plumbing fixtures, a large duct system, various overhead sensors and light fixtures, 
a small electrical room, various MEP trim throughout the site, and finally, exterior light fixtures. Thank you for your time in watching this video, and please contact me for further information at techsags12 at gmail.com.